Okay. This was my homemade scissor jack. And after struggling for over two hours, getting absolutely nowhere, we go down the Harbor Freight and we buy this scissor jack, which has this nice strap, strap the transmission down with. And it has plenty of height throw. It got a, it can go all the way down. It can, you know, fully elevate. That one wasn't not so much. Unstable, very easy. So that was the best 80 bucks I ever spent in my life. Uh, critical to success on a transmission. That thing and secret weapon number two. Uh, yeah, a little blood and gut. The uh, the alignments. Now these are 10. M10 1.5 metric nuts. I cut the heads off, right? You know, I even slotted them in case I had to get a screwdriver to back them off. But the idea is these screw into the engine and act as alignment pins that you can then hang the transmission on. So like for instance, when I did it, this is the old transmission of course, it looks like that and something like uh, like this, uh, where was it? on the other side of the starter? Yeah, I think it's over, over here. Okay, so those pins are in the engine block to start with. That way, when you get close, you can just kind of hang the transmission on those and help them to guide it in square. Well, square, but you know what I mean that way, uh, rotationally to match up with all the other. Uh, alignment dials and whatnot. Plus it just takes all the load off. I mean you can just take a break and just kind of grab it and shake it. But basically what you do is while it's still on that jack stand and you've slid it into position and got it started on those and it sticks, you know, you can see about that much of the, the fly about much of a space. Just grab this thing and just wiggle it while it's still attached to the jack and uh, it'll work its way into the pilot bushing without any big deal. Anyway. That's the tip there. Oh, and those also, these also work great. The starter's kind of a pain in the ass. So you start one of these into the starter, into the um, into this here. Screw that in, and then you can just kind of slide the starter on, get one in, and get the then bolt on the other side, and you're good to go. All right, now a piece of resistance. Yeah, three years of French in high school. Okay, we have this. Yay! Let me get. Trans is in. Bolted up. One odd thing was for some reason this transmission, the ZX, this little boss, this mounting boss right here, I'm pointing at that screw right there, was thicker than on that side. So I had to find another, I think it was an 8 millimeter 1.25 bolt to go there, a little longer that would work. Anyway, there's that. Uh, Speedo cogs plugged in. That was a little bit different. It mounts differently, but I was still able to get it in. No big deal. I just had to make sure it lined up straight. Uh, transmission mount. I guess I had that in right. You know, I'm not 100% sure I have that in right. I don't know how to tell. The bent, it kind of bends forward. Let me see if I can orient this right. And maybe you can tell me if this looks right. I don't know if that, how it's coming out on the camera. But, you know, that's not the end of the world. Uh, worst case scenario is I can come back and and uh, redo that. I don't remember how that goes. Anyway, it's in. It's bolted up. It's nice and solid. Let me rotate around here. I was, I was able to get the uh, gear shift in by th from the top. You know, I'd already had it in there. had the uh, had the gator and everything exposed in the bottom, just kind of in there while I was installing the transmission. And then once the transmission was mounted up, I had a helper come through and assist by pushing the shift rod around, the, sh the stick down, until I finally got it engaged and I got the little Jesus clip in the pin. Everything's good there, so we're all ready to roll. Um, heat shield is on. I hope I can remember how to do the catalytic converter part. There's a couple pieces here. I don't really remember how all those went until you treat me clearly. That goes on the bottom of the catalytic converter. That had something to do with protecting a wire somewhere. And you know, honestly, I just don't remember how this went. Darn it. But anyway, I'm sure I'll be able to figure it out. There's a single mount for the uh, exhaust, which has to go on next. And uh, there. 
Got the uh, drive shaft bolted back up. Everything's looking really good. So, hopefully I'll be able to get the exhaust in tonight. I don't know. I might get tired of doing that. I still need to hit some of these. I'll go ahead and do what I said I was going to do and while I'm under here, hit some of these uh, rusty spots with some rust stop and uh, call it a day. But yeah, uh, it's looking good. I'm pretty excited. I got some uh, I got MT90 um, trans fluid in there. That's a uh, GL4 synchro safe brass, synchro yellow metal, synchro safe. Um, you know, doesn't have a lot of sulfur content to it. You don't want to use high ploy type gear wheels with brass synchros, from what I understand. Nice new rubber gator on the shift boot. That looks good. I've already shifted the shifter. It looks great. So, more to come later. But yeah, we're almost there. And I'll tell you what. If you get a quote, somebody's going to do this to install one of these for you, man, I wouldn't do it for less than a grand, honestly. I mean, I've been on this thing for three days solid, and it's not easy work. So, people charge a lot to do clutches and transmissions and whatnot. I can kind of understand it. Now, uh, and I would pay it, honestly, I probably would, if I wasn't afraid of somebody coming along and jacking the thing in the wrong place and screwing up my frame rails which has been done already and every Z has its battle scars to show for it so I mean you just want to know it's done right and that's the problem you know I, you, you want the mechanic to do the work as though he was doing it for himself and that if you can find a guy like that pay him to do it otherwise do it yourself and just enjoy the process more later